Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about what is Zoha. It has become a very uh, popular word nowadays. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the problem? Well, problem is we are moving towards what we call a paperless world. Ideally, uh, you can even go into offices, old school offices, and they will have much less paperwork than they used to. And it's a much better system. However, uh, we have tools to manage it. That's the best part, as in from HR to accounting to customer relations to budgeting, taxing, all of that. We got the tools for that. It's good. It's awesome. However, there are a lot of vendors, a lot of tools, as in some parts could be from Microsoft, some card could be from Tally, some card could be from this or that. Uh, so that creates an issue that there is a mess. And what we classify as integration is not possible or even integration hell. And that creates a, a very serious problem. Basically, now we have moved from paper to a digital system. We want to collaborate everything into singular data point. Uh, now, like, okay, what's the point? Well, uh, like early 1950s to 80s, let's just say, uh, America discovered barcode scanner, cheap, low cost barcode scanner. And then they were like, okay, what if we put it in every shop? Now here's the deal. For mom and pop shop, it did not help that much. But for big puppies, like let's say Costco and all that, you are talking about was third largest populated country. There was a lot of data. Now, what was the use of that? Well, once you have one or two years of data, you know the patterns of people before the people know themselves. Like basically, you know, oh, in this season, this sort of stock will be, be like always out of stock. You can figure out things. And uh, it allowed them to tailor their inventory, their stock, and all of those things had exponential yield in terms of actual profitability while improving the customer experience also. So uh, having that sort of integration requires complete integration, complete, not just like number CSV data, no, full integration. So centralized, it's lot, it's awesome. That's what we want to do. Uh, but here's the, they rarely work with each other. So if you're talking about like, uh, you have software from this, you have software from that, will they work with each other? Uh, no. So that creates a serious issue. Basically integration hell and uh, making things opaque right now. Uh, basically, if you ever wondered why Microsoft became such a big name was because of this. Microsoft Windows, that was like, okay, that was good. Microsoft Office, that was like print money. And there is a reason because they want knew about integration they worked their ass off to have microsoft project microsoft word microsoft excel microsoft powerpoint the idea was very simple it's like have everything that a corporate needs in one package and they will run it on windows the end the end it does not matter oh apple this and apple that no money making so they really got it uh basically right but here's the this was really awesome, but Microsoft email did not become uh, like uh, Outlook uh, was good and all, but it did not grow that much. And now if you want to integrate all these things with Gmail, whew, it's rough. So that's the fundamental problem. So Zoho uh, Corporation, so to say, is started by these two gentlemen. I have very amazing interview of them, like almost 40 minute interview. I would urge you to watch that. That was, um, I think, shot in 2023. So recent enough. Um, so they started a company in 1996, uh, AdventNet. So AdventNet was uh, officially established in New Jersey, USA, although the people were still in India. And uh, they slowly started to grow and this is their headquarter building. Uh, they have big presence at this point in time and uh, they became Zoho Corporation in 2009. They had a product named Zoho and after the success people were like, oh, Zoho people were like, okay, let's just rename it. So that became. Now, one of the shocking part, given how big the Zoho reach is, they are still privately held. Now, are, uh, is there other companies that are big and still privately held? There are a few, not very common, but there are a few. For example, the biggest one would be SpaceX. And it does grant you a certain level of control. It does risk you like money starvation and all that, but does grant you a lot of control as in like you can decide it. And very specific part, you can do long-term gambles. Right now we have uh, went full cuckoo in the world. Basically investors are literally controlling what a corporation is doing. It's like, dude, you do not know, You are you are just a bank. You don't know how to run other companies, but again, by law, they have to, uh, basically corporations are liable. Uh, they have to make, uh, do their best job to appease shareholders, so to say. So that creates a very destructive feedback loop. So it's a very good thing that this company does not uh, have private, uh, basically open market, so to say. So it's a very big thing. And they have massive portfolio. Like they started like, okay, we're going to do this sort of things and all that. Now they're like, what do you do? things basically remove the core thing uh, but they are dealing with the metal layer of 
all corporation all of it as in let's just say you are a cad uh, firm as in like you do computer related designing for people those software they are not going to touch but here's it how do you sell that puppy customer management system they got this okay how do you create a software for stacking uh, basically how the productivity is going how things are going they got this they're like okay what do you need for uh, basically creating custom email clients and all that they got this all of things that is on a ox layer metadata layer they got it everything like even a small things like presentation maker they're like we got this bro we good we got this so all of them allows them to have a very firm control over full stack of a metadata layer of a corporation and that is a big thing like it's a very hassle free experience and they have earned their reputation like they are really good so what we are talking about well we are talking about enterprise resource planning i have no idea who came up with that word but that's what we have so basically the idea is whole business suite should be integrated as in remove the main like uh, you know nuts and bolts of the system everything else should be integrated like you should not have a scenario where it's like okay i want to share some presentation slides and people have to talk about it. they have to like okay go from this email client to this link to this uh, software to this uh, slide then okay take a screenshot share it because you can't just directly link people there it's a mess and again you can pay attention to google why google suite has started to have so many things that's the reason ideally they also want to become like zoha where they are like a software layer the end the end sir like okay what if uh, engineers are working on google sheet and they have to create a uh, basically presentation they can live link it it would be far more difficult again it's not impossible it would be difficult but if everything is it can be uh, live linked to all other uh, parties that are involved that is like short of take money so basically every tool and application all of these puppies are interlinked via api you do not like okay right click export export in this format and hope uh, and praise to the stars that it actually imports perfectly like uh, uh, right now i have uh, basically google sheet where i'm uh, basically counting my finances very measly but uh, i do give this file to my chartered accountant who like actually files the taxes for me and here's the problem <laughs> if i gave him the file and he is opens it in microsoft it will not work even though the format is supported it's not truly compatible it's just like good luck enough compatible so that creates an issue again if he was also using google and he's uh, using my google uh, like i can directly share the file file works all the coloring all the ox things work precisely as it meant to everybody wins but again that's why he has to now buy two software he because again a lot of people do in google uh, sheet and a lot of people do in uh, this microsoft excel so he has to pay for a microsoft excel also so that's the issue now again you multiply that by a large corporation this issues become like brutal so 100% transparency in all digital work meaning what presentation was done who was the one responsible for basically uh, booking the meeting room who was responsible for actually uh, showcasing the uh, basically slide show all of those things like a deep nitty gritty there are certain companies that go so deep like you can buy kiosk systems from them they're like okay uh, like let's just say you are opening your own mcdonalds they're like bro we got this we got this bro like you just buy the physical um, brick and mortar store we here's a package we have all integration like every menu item that is been selected and clicked the whole data center is like bro we got this we know this item is not selling this item is selling a lot we have to like turn this out because the profit margin is not that good let's try to ship people to this all of those things can be done and you do not have to worry about scale or logistic if corporation basically the company that is selling you this does their job right you do not have to worry meaning you start out oh i'm just a, let's just say i'm a small company i'm like starting with few things cool awesome gg and they're like now i'm 10000 people like like i have a whole section like the biggest flex somebody did on me not even a flex like it is just like you're telling me it's like you know hey uh, who does the uh, chart and uh, funding us like no i have a team not one person i have a team not even renting or like okay we're going to rent your service no 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 we have a building full of chartered and accountant that's how big our business is so in those sort of system this is like i got this mom and pop shop to big daddy government we got this and only one payment vector that is also a desirable thing it's much easier okay how where we are paying we are paying millions of dollar to this company the end that's much easier even though you could get cheaper solution where it's like okay i'm paying this i'm paying that or that company went bank like that is much more risky because you can mess up the payment people have learned the hard way so that is the and customer support 
whenever you are a big enough client, this sort of company generally can keep, especially if it's a high priority enough and you are paying high enough, they can have 24 into 7 customer support. And because it is all integrated, if something breaks, like let's just say an engineer linked, uh, let's say some sort of Excel sheet to some presentation slide, it's not working, they will be the one reason. They will not say, sir, we do not know, they must have done some update. No, we got this, we're going to take care of it, ideally. So you can understand, this is the whole idea. Complete integration of the metadata layer. I don't think they will try or even want to jump into actual tools as in like CAD, video editing, uh, Photoshop, those sort of things, uh, Max, Maya. But I do expect them to like, you know, take care of every aux need, like everything else. Like Google already has half of them. So now uh, we come to the reason why it is so popular nowadays is Ratia app. Um, now it's a South Indian word and from a different language. So that's why I'm ha having a hard time pronunciating it. It's basically India's own answer to WhatsApp. Basically how WeChat is for uh, basically Chinese people, WhatsApp. Uh, this is similar. Now call is end to end encrypted. They are very clear about that. Chat as of now, they are not done it. They, I've looked through their website. It's not a done end to end encrypted. And uh, they are saying as soon as the uh, basically infrastructure is ready, they will do it because again it does take a bit more oomph, a bit more horsepower to do so and uh, file sharing size is limited to one gigabyte now i am old enough where i remember like uh, whatsapp had such a tiny limitation when um, basically telegram started to be became common and telegram like two gigabyte limit i was like whoa everybody just flooded telegram and like oh, okay 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 whatsapp started to increase so this is a one and a lot of people were complaining the early days it was only 256 megabytes so i think the um infrastructure on the back end is starting to scale now like and again the, you can talk to them it's like we are not expecting this sort of exponential kaboom growth they happened like you know it became india's first uh, social networking app on the like you know system and downloads went from like you know few thousand people to 300000 people a day like the scale was like so that was brutal and they're scaling it up. Although uh, when I'm making this video, they have crossed uh, one CR, one crore. Uh, don't look at it, like I made a mistake, extra zero. So this is the screenshot, one CR. Uh, that translates to 10 million downloads. Significant, it's not uh, like some small nations, uh, full population, so it is significant. And uh, although if you want to contrast it with WhatsApp, uh, while that number is good, it is still uh, comparatively, few zeros are missing, like how many zeros? WhatsApp have crossed 10 billion, You're like wait a minute, there are not 10 billion people on the planet. Well, you have to understand, 10 billion simply means uh, on Android, uh, how many times you have upgraded your phone, how many times you have done a reinstall, which again, it's quite common to do so. And if you are upgrading your phone every, let's say two years or even three years, it will pile up. So that number is actually not that great, but like it is, it's what you're supposed to have. So long way to go, but like a good progress. And the growth was like, So what can we expect in the future? Well, Zoho has made a good progress, uh, fundamentally speaking, in business world. Like their name is good, they are known and people like it. It's it's good. And uh, Messenger does have to become global to comply because, compete, sorry. Uh, because without being global reach, right now, again, I'm not a, like, you know, any one significant, but even in my phone contact, I have someone, hey, uh, Ron, uh, let's just say he's in UK, uh, US. And then it's like, okay, one of my friend, UK, another friend, Australia. And that's just me. Somebody who has like even more, uh, basically some venture capitalists that I'm uh, linked with, their phone book is like da -da 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 -da, almost, almost 50 countries. So you do need like a bit of a global reach to actually compete with uh, these giants. It can be done. It's not impossible. It's just on even if let's assume even if that does not happen, India is big enough market like WeChat is big enough. And that's another benefit of having huge population. One billion uh, plus people, actually 1.5 billion. Let's just say, even if you are only going 500 million active daily users, you're good, you're good, you got this, you're good. So that is there. And having alternative to Microsoft products from a national point of view is very good. Now, again, let this be very clear. This is a bit of an anecdotal thing. I've been told people who work in software and all that, if critical software do not get a, like a, have a continuous team maintaining it, it can get kaput very quickly. As in like, this is a, one of those odd reasons why Russia is having such a hard time with their refineries. And uh, Ukrainian love that is also getting it love tapped is their softwares are not working. I'm like, how the heck software can break? Yeah, apparently this sort of SCADA softwares and all the refinement and management and maximizing tools, they are running on such what we call bleeding edge. So they always need like, there has to be people. All those people have been sanctioned off. So that created an issue. Um, 
So it would be better from a national point of view where it's like, hey, let's have our own stack so we do not get kaput if we get uh, like, you know, some sort of sanction. It is a wise national policy. And there is other other options also. You have open source and leather figure, it does exist. Like Udo um, is another alternative, but be mindful. Um, Udo, while it is good, it does require you to have a lot of horsepower, as in you need to know what you're doing. And again, people pay for this simply because nobody wants to deal with hassle. Why do people pay, pay for Amazon Web Services? They do not want to pay, deal with hassle. Here's the deal, there are people who are selling Amazon Web Services on a back end, as in like, I have Amazon Web Services, I'm selling you services on my name. People are still paying it, why? Hassle free, like Amazon hassle, less hassle than, less hassle, let's just say even less hassle, people will willingly pay. So world works like that, you do not want hassle. But again, if let's just say your requirement is absolute secrecy, absolute like everything remains here, let's just say a national defense project, in those sort of scenario, this becomes the only viable option. However, let the Rebecca, you have to have your own team, basically people who are working on the tool rather than utilizing the tool. So it is this option is there. So it is going good, like, you know, and the idea of like having sales, HR, onboard, legal, marketing, development, all of those being in one uh, ecosystem, it is a next generation of uh, massive workforce management. So this was my presentation on basically Zoho, why this name is becoming such a synonymous with big things. Hopefully you guys liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra experiment. Please leave a comment once, uh, so I can reply to it. If you have liked it, learn from it, in that case, subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.